Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about differentials. And in this chapter, what they mean by differentials, they mainly focus on the change in y, how to estimate the change in y, or how to find the actual change in y. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have the blank and blank are called differentials, right? So differentials are not actually new to you because you've seen these before. They actually are referred to as your dy, right? Your dy or your dx. So both those things are called our differentials. Our dx refers to our change in x and our dy refers to our change in y. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the two different formulas that go along with this section. So whenever we have dy, right, equal to f prime of x times d of x, that means that we're gonna use, we're gonna use d of, dx, right, the differential of x to get our change in y, right? But this isn't going to be a very specific thing. It may be actually, it's actually an approximation, right? So this right here is going to be the approximation of our change in y using our change of x and our derivative, which in this case, our derivative is going to be the line tangent, the line tangent at x, right? So here's x, here's x. And then you guys can see that here we have a line tangent, a line tangent to x, right? So we're going to be using the change in y, I mean the, the, the slope of line tangent times the dx, right? So we're going to be multiplying the slope of line tangent times the change in x to approximate our change in y, right? And then let's take care of the first formula. But then we're going to compare that to the actual change in y by talking about the actual change in y by actually subtracting the f of x plus a change in x, right? So this this higher um, y value, which is r in this graph, minus our p y value, which is going to be the f of x in the graph, right? So that is how we're going to find the actual difference in y, and that's how we're going to find the approximation in the difference in y. So now let's go ahead and do some examples. So this is for interest of will be really easy if I gave you some simple functions, right? So instead of wasting time just doing some really easy examples, I decided to throw in a little bit like a little twist in derivatives, maybe like a little difficult derivative to make this video actually worth watching. And we get some practice on actually some pretty difficult derivatives, right? So let's go ahead and start with the first one, right? We gotta find the differential dy and evaluate it for the given values of x and dx, right? So it means that we're working with this formula, right? We're working with this formula. And what I mean that I need to find the derivative, I need to find f prime of x, to, and then multiply it by my dx. Well, my dx is already given, so I don't need to do anything to get that. But I need to find my f prime of x. So the same thing as finding my y prime of x in this function, right? So before I actually even find my y prime of x, I have a radical of 1 plus x squared. That's no good. I don't like deriving in radicals. So I'm going to go ahead and have 1 plus x squared to the 1 half, right? And now I'm ready to derive it. So when I derive that, if you guys notice, I actually have a chain rule because I have a function raised to a one half, and then inside, inside I have another composite function, right? So let's go ahead and take that derivative. It'll be one half, one plus x squared to the negative one half times two x, right? Times the derivative of the inside. But now we gotta kind of play cleanup to make this derivative look a little nicer. So we're gonna start off by by having one half, we're going to bring down this negative power to the bottom. So we're going to have one plus x squared to the one half. And then we're going to bring this x squared to the front. So we're going to have two x, right, times two x. So one last point of cleanup, this two and this two are going to cancel. And then we're going to change the square root for a, we're going to change this one half for an actual square root. So we're going to have x over, let's try to fit it in here, x over the square root of one plus x squared, right? So that is going to be our y prime or our f prime of x. It's gonna be the same exact thing. So now I'm ready to compute my my dy, my dy. So I'm gonna have x over root of one plus x squared times dx, right? So now it's just about plugging in. So for x, I have zero. So I'm just gonna have zero here. For dx, I'm just gonna have 0 0.01 and then for the bottom which is radical of 1 plus 0 squared I'm gonna have just that 
Well, the answer to this dy is simply going to be just zero, right? Because I have a zero times everything, so all I'm gonna get just is zero. And that's exactly what you gotta do to find this differential. Just multiply the f prime of x times the dx, right? So now let's go ahead and see another example. It's gonna be another type of catchy derivative, right? In which we need to perform a product rule. We don't need to manipulate this before we start it compared to example A. So let's go ahead and do it. So we just need to do bottom squared. And then here we got to multiply by the derivative of the top, which is one times the bottom. I don't know how a minus stuck. I mean, a plus stuck in there is a minus. Minus the derivative of the bottom, which is one times the top. Y prime. So now let's, let's play for clean, for cleanup, right? We got to kind of put this together. So this is going to be, we're going to distribute this one and we're going to distribute this one as well. So that's going to give us x minus 2 minus, it's going to be in a parentheses, minus, if I distribute the 1, I just keep x minus 1. And now I distribute my minus. You guys see, I'm very careful when I'm doing my quotient rules because it's really easy to mess up when it comes to my, my signs. So now if I distribute this, I'm going to have x minus 2 minus x minus 1. And now for final cleanup, I'm going to squeeze it in here, x minus 2 squared, right? This x and this x are going to cancel, and this negative 2 and this negative 3 are going to give me a total of negative 3, right? So my negative 2 and my negative 1 are giving me a total of negative 3. So this is my final derivative. And now when I go find my dy, I am just going to go ahead and multiply my y prime which is going to be negative 3 over x minus 2 squared times my dx, right? And that means I'm going to plug in, I don't know why I put dy dx there, I'm going to have dy. I'm going to put negative 3 over, my x is 3, so 3 minus 2 squared times my dx, which is 0.2. And that is going to give me a total of negative 0.06. negative point zero six. So that's all we kind of have to do, just kind of multiply our f prime of x times our dx. And the more difficult part here is just when we have a harder derivative. So I went, and, I went ahead and gave you guys more challenging derivatives. So this whole video will be a little more productive than it would be if we were just deriving things like x squared plus one, you know? It would just be way too simple. So let's go ahead and do an example two in which we actually compare, we actually compare that's the approximation of change of y compared to the actual change in y, right? So we're going to start off by doing the dy. We're actually going to start off by the approximation that compared to the actual answer, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Things are just a little different here, though. First, we're going to start off by writing out our formula, right? So dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. So the first thing I should need is actually to get my f prime of x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's going to give me 3x squared plus 2. Cool. Now I need to find my dx. That's my next thing I got to find, right? My dx. But it's not so obvious here because I don't actually give you a dx compared to the other examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have to find my dx. And my dx is going to be my change in x from my x final to my x initial, right? And how I'm going to do that, I'm just going to subtract them. 1 minus 1.02 minus 1 1.1. And that is going to give me a total of 0 0.02. So that is my change in x, 0 0.02. The difference between the final x, which is 1.02, minus the initial x. So now, I need one last thing. And that is my x, right? So my x that I didn't have in the other one. And my x is going to be 1 because that is my initial point, right? So just kind of just go back to the diagram and refer to it. We have the x here, which in this case would be 1. And then after I, I get to 1.02, right? So that means that I'm adding a total of 0 0.02 to go from 1 to 1.02. And that is the point of my change of x, right? That I travel one, that I travel 0 0.02 from my initial x to my x plus change of x. So that means that my x, my x plus change of x is just equal to 1.02. But let's go ahead and put things together in red for my dy. 
So my dy is going to be 3x squared plus 2. All of this times change of x, right? And my change of x is equal to 0 0.02. And my x that I'm inputting in there is going to be this, this 1, right? So I'm inputting 1 there. So when I try to get the total of this, this right here is going to give me 5. It's going to give me 5 times 0 0.02. So my final answer is just going to be, my final answer is just going to be 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Cool. So now that I'm done with that, I am going to go ahead and find the actual change in y, right, which is how I compute this. I'm going to start this off and do it in blue by first writing off the formula. And I'm going to have f of x plus change of x minus f of x, right? It's going to be a little tougher. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute f of 1.02, which is the final x minus the initial x and that is going to give me a total of, when you plug this into your calculator, when you plug 1.02 into here, it's going to give you 0 0.2.0808, and that's going to be minus, well, 2.0804, and that is going to be minus 2. If you input 2 into your original, it gives you 2, and that total is going to be 0 .08 0 .08 0 .08 0 0.08.04. So we can see that the actual change of y and the approximation of change of y are not the same, right? And they're not too close either, right? So the idea is that the farther away you are, the larger your change of x is, right? The bigger this stuff is, the bigger your error is because you're so far away from, your change of x is just far away, so it's not a good approximation, right? So the closer you are to your initial, to your initial x, the more precise your approximation of your change of watt is, right? So now let's go ahead and do some practice problems on this stuff. See you guys next time.